Zechariah, Elizabeth, and the angel. They had an encounter that was life-changing, but it was not easy on Zechariah. Zechariah wound up not being able to speak for quite a while. Why happened there? What made the angel silence Zechariah? Did Zechariah make a mistake? Did Zechariah say something wrong? Did Zechariah get in his own way? What exactly happened with Zechariah and the angel? That's what we're considering for the next few moments. Angels are God's messengers. The New Testament introduces Christmas to us beginning with an elderly couple living in the hill country of Judah. Zechariah is his name, Elizabeth is her name. They are people of exemplary faith. They pray, they follow the law, they are righteous in every way, but there's one thing missing from their lives, one big thing, they are childless. They had prayed, they had obeyed, but month after month, cycle after cycle, nothing happens. In that time and place, to be without children is to be a colossal failure, and what a heartbreak. Don't we know that feeling? Don't we all have something in our lives that hasn't worked out like we hoped, even prayed that it would, a relationship that failed? a job that didn't quite fulfill us, a decision that led us down a path we didn't really want to go down, or just the general tenure of our lives. We've reached a certain point and we're not exactly where we want to be and we don't have the resources we thought we'd have, or the dream hasn't come true. Zechariah is a priest. Once a year, he, along with the other priests, travel to Jerusalem where they take their turns serving in the temple. They prepare the sacrifices, they light the candles, they burn the incense, they sweep the floors, they answer the phones, they send out the emails. During this time of service, the priest casts lots to see who will perform the holiest responsibility of all, and that is enter the inner sanctuary, the Holy of Holies, alone, light the incense on the high altar, and then step outside from that holy place and bless the congregation who's gathered there because you have received a communication from God. Zechariah's name is selected. He goes in to the Holy of Holies when an angel appears. Angels are God's messengers. They come in many forms. Zechariah knows the Bible, but he knows this is a, an extraordinary experience, a supernatural experience. The word in the Bible that is used to describe Zechariah in this moment is translated as terrified. The Greek word is terasso, and it doesn't mean terrified as much as it means shaken up. The angel appears, and Zechariah is not just frightened. His world is shaken up. His perception of the way things are is shattered. His understanding of reality is broken into many pieces. This is the kind of thing that isn't supposed to happen. But here it is, happening in front of him. And the angel responds to Zechariah's terrasso by saying what angels always say when they appear, do not be afraid. This is the standard greeting of an angel. Not, hello, how are you doing? Do not be afraid, or fear not. This is an example of meta-communication. 
communication about communication. Communication that sets up what comes next. So, you want to talk to your children. You want to talk to one of them in particular. You say to them, I'd like to have a conversation with you. How do you think they're feeling in that moment? Have I done something wrong? Am I going to be punished? And you say, don't worry, this is about this. And suddenly there's relief. That's meta-communication. Your boss sends you an email, please come see me as soon as possible. What do you think? You think the worst. This is it. I'm gone. This is it. They know I've been taking paper clips. This is it. <laughs> and you step into the boss's office and the boss says, don't worry. I'm going to talk to you about this project. And you're relieved. This is meta communication. It's a brilliant strategy. Angels use it consistently. Do not be afraid. Creates a clean slate in Zechariah. Angels are God's messengers. The angel has come not with a vague promise or a generic word of comfort, but a specific message for Zechariah and Elizabeth. This message is mind-blowing, unthinkable, reality-shattering. Your life will meet, never be the same. The message is, your prayers have been heard. That's the first thing the angel says. God's been listening. for these many years, for these many decades, for your entire life, you and Elizabeth, been praying for this, hoping for this, doing everything you can to have this happen. Your prayers have been heard. Elizabeth will conceive. Zechariah, you will be a father. The child who is to be called John will get the people ready for the coming of the Lord. Not surprisingly, Zechariah is stunned and skeptical. How can this be? We're old. And the angel says, believe it's going to happen. It's going to happen. This is from God. But because you did not believe, you will become mute, unable to speak until the day of John's arrival. Gosh, what did Zechariah do wrong? Is he being punished? His comment, how can this be? We're old. That just seems like a reflexive comment to me. Not really a sign of disbelief. But yet the angel silences Zechariah from that moment. Maybe the silence isn't a punishment. Maybe there's something else going on here. Maybe it's not that Zechariah really didn't, did something wrong, but maybe he hasn't done what is right yet. And there needed to be a space between this announcement and Zechariah receiving it. And maybe the silence just creates that space. You know... We really don't learn much while we are talking. We really don't grow personally while we are talking. It's when we're silent. It's when we're listening that we're open to something new. Zechariah's issue in that moment, when the angel says this is going to happen, may just have been a lack of imagination. In that moment, he just couldn't envision that his present would be anything different than what it is. He just couldn't envision a future. He just didn't have the imagination 
to consider that in the future things might change. He just didn't have the imagination to believe that God really was a real God who does real things in the real world to people like Elizabeth and him. He just didn't have the imagination in that moment because he had such a long history of disappointment and frustration and silence from God. I hope none of us are in that place. On the outside, we don't look like it. On the outside, we keep up appearances and we're all excited about Christmas rolling around again. But what's going on on the inside? On the inside, have we given up hope that anything really will change? Have we come to believe that our lives will always be the same that they are now on the inside? Has our sense of God become vague? And we really don't have a dynamic, active understanding that God is an active agent in this world that does real things, even in the lives of people like you and me. After this was all done, Zechariah emerges from the Holy of Holies, and the glory of God had swallowed him whole. There was awe on his face and the reflection of the angel in his eyes. And the people who were all out there waiting for Zechariah to say something can see that something has happened. They can see that Zechariah's had a vision. It's, it's evident on his face, but... Zechariah goes to talk, and he doesn't have any words to say. Is there anything worse for a religious professional to be standing in front of a congregation and having nothing to say? I have that nightmare regularly. (laughs) Sometimes even when I'm standing right here, But the people could tell that Zechariah had been in the presence of the holy. And they may have remembered that the name Zechariah means God remembers. And they saw that God had showed up somehow, some way to Zechariah, that God had remembered him. Zechariah had to go home. He, he couldn't talk, and he tried to motion what was happening, and then he went home to Elizabeth, and she conceived, and the baby is born. And Zechariah asks for a tablet and writes, his name is John, and with that, Zechariah's voice returns. He praises God. Zechariah and Elizabeth's son is John the Baptist, He will get the people ready for the coming of the Lord. It all works out. It seems that Zechariah needed that period of time of silence, that period of time of not speaking, that period of time when you're not just focused on what you want to say, but you're focused on listening and attending and letting your imagination expand. That's the gift that the angel gave to Zechariah. And that's the gift the angel is giving to you and me on this first Sunday at Advent. The gift of imagination. The gift that things do not have to be as they are, that there might be a change in the future. The gift that God is a real God doing real things in the real world, the gift that there is a future for you and for me, the gift of imagination. Advent 
is about much more than putting up the tree, preparing meals and treats, and wrapping presents. Advent is a time for us to shake up the routine, to create moments of imagination when we can dream the dream again, when we can hope again, when we can expect again. A time to reject the status quo. That's the message of Zechariah's angel to you and me. And you become an angel too when you share this message with others. The message like, let's think differently about things this Christmas. Let's do things a little differently this Christmas. Let's pray different prayers and let's say different things. And let's be together differently this Christmas. And let's not just give gifts to ourselves this Christmas. Let's give to others. And let's not just not give gifts to one another although I'm sure you need another new iPad or the latest phone, but maybe there's an experience we could give to one another, an experience that grows us closer together and closer to God at the same time. Maybe we can plan something. Are you getting the idea? It's all about imagination. It's all about rejecting the status quo and hoping and praying and anticipating a new future, a different future.